Hi students, welcome to the class. So last class I briefed you about, uh, gave you some instructions regarding uh, the syllabus as well as the chapters what uh, Umayman ma'am is going to deal and chapters what I am going to deal, right? So today we will move into the first chapter without much discussion. So uh, think of it, you are in class 12 and have to keep learning, okay? Keep learning, enjoy learning, set a target and try to achieve the same. So what is the chapter what we are going to start? The first chapter we are going to start is chapter 8. The name of the chapter is uh, Human Health and Diseases. Okay. So what is the chapter? Chapter 8 it is Human Health and Diseases. So this Human Health and Diseases when you are saying this chapter is actually a reading chapter. In case if you read you uh, understand very clearly but a lot to learn on new technical terms are there which you have to memorize you have to learn and you have to keep in mind understand and then learn okay so uh, this chapter human health and diseases in this as the name suggests we are going to discuss what are the need, things which are needed for health about immunity immunization vaccination programs uh, about different conditions about different diseases then we are going to discuss about some drugs uh, alcohol uh, abuse all those things we are going to discuss in this chapter. Very interesting chapter, this one. And a common means everyone can easily make it. It's nothing difficult to understand and all. So you can easily make it out, okay? So please make sure that every day you are covering up the portion which has been covered. The next day you should be in a position to answer the question which has been covered till the last class. So that when a unit text is taken in this chapter, everyone is scoring very good marks, okay? So, what is human health and diseases? Okay, so what is health? So, you know how health is very important. One uh, saying is also there, isn't it? If wealth is lost, nothing is lost. If health is lost, something is lost. And if character is lost, everything is lost. So, health is an important factor. If you're losing health, you're losing something. And that something is very important to have a peaceful life. So, everyone needs to stay healthy. So what is health? If a definition of a health, if you are taking it, what is health? Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely free from diseases. So I am healthy. When can I say? Can I say I am healthy if I am not having any diseases? Means I am not suffering from uh, any diseases like fever, I am not having, I am not having some stomach upset, I am not having any uh, type of cholera or malaria, nothing is there. So can I say I am healthy? No. The answer is no. If just I am free from disease, it doesn't mean that I am healthy. I am healthy when can I say? When I am physically fit, when I am uh, mentally fit as well as I am socially fit. Okay. So physically fit, as we know, if you are not having disease and your body organs are perfectly functioning, you don't have any problem with your body parts or body organs, then obviously you are physically fit. Okay, you can do carry out any task, no issues, you are not getting tired easily because of the same. So, then you are physically fit. The second is what mentally fit. Mental is, you should be stress free. You should not have any sort of stresses, whether it is work related or study related or family related, whatever stress you experience in case if you are not having that stress okay so your mind is cool you are not having any tensions going on in between so in that case you are healthy okay so first is physical second one is your mental and what is the third one third one is socially fit so what do you mean by socially fit social means in your neighborhood the people whom you are dealing with okay so whomsoever may be, where I'm going out, I'm dealing with many people. So that comes under your social category, isn't it? So in that also you are maintaining a harmonious relationship with everyone. Then you don't have any tensions. Otherwise just imagine in nearby your area, someone is always, a drunken person is there and he always comes drinking. And he used to get into the house, shout like anything, beats his wife, like that he is creating an issue every day. So obviously you will be seeing it, you will be listening it and you will not be that happy with the same, isn't it? So in case if you are studying or that noise pollution, that and all will be disturbing you much. In case, for some, okay, for, not for everyone. 
So that is uh, the social areas, means nearby locality, everything is okay, then you are healthy, okay? So waste management, everything is perfect, so you are healthy. So health is a state of physical, mental and social well-being. You are physically fit, you are mentally fit, you are socially fit, you are friendly with everyone, you can get into any groups nicely, good groups, not the bad ones, okay? So then you are having good health, okay? Along with that, you should also not suffer from any disease. So then we call them as what? I am healthy. So that is health. So what is a disease then? So the second term is what? It, what is a disease? So disease is a condition which is interfering with normal functioning of your body. Your body is functioning normally. Okay, everything is billas going on very nicely. So all of a sudden, some parts of my body, part of, like my uh, intestine or my heart or any of my body, means the kidney, something is not responding properly or the whole body is having a high right, temperature. So some sort of problems is there in your body from the normal, it is uh, acting in a different manner then you are supposed to suffer from a disease, okay? So how can you understand that I am having a disease? Because of the symptoms which appears, I can understand that I am having a disease, isn't it? So disease is a condition which interferes with the normal functioning of your body, okay? So what is a disease? It is a condition which is interfering, not allowing your body to function normally, which previously it was functioning because of this disease, your body is not functioning normally. Your metabolism, you know what is metabolism? It is a combination of anabolism and catabolism. That is not working properly. Then you are suffering from a disease. Okay. So that is regarding the two definitions. What is health and what is disease? I repeat once again, what is health? It is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely free from diseases. And what is a disease? Disease is a condition that interferes with the normal functioning of your body. Is that clear? So these are the two terms which you need to know. That is the uh, heading of the chapter. Now we are moving on to the diseases topic. We are going to learn a lot of diseases. So first let us categorize the types of diseases. Okay? Then there we go. Diseases, when you are saying, can be broadly classified into two types, okay? So, diseases into how many types we can classify? We can classify them into two types. One is infectious diseases and other one is non-infectious diseases, okay? So, in the two terms, what we are going to discuss is infectious and non-infectious. So, what is infectious and what is non-infectious? Everyone knows this one, isn't it? You are learning from lower classes, it is this can be of communicable, non-communicable, contagious, not contagious. So, infectious means it is infecting, it is spreading from one person to another. It is communicable, which means it is spreading from one person to another. It is contagious, which means it spreads from one person to another. So, these sort of diseases... We categorize into what? Infectious diseases. Other names are communicable, contagious and all we can see. Okay. Non-infectious. It doesn't spread from one person to another. It's not spreading. It's not that dangerous. It doesn't spread from one to another. Dangerous for that person but not for the others. Okay. So that is called as what? Non-infectious diseases. Now, uh, like for example, I will give you infectious diseases. Like you are having chicken pox. And you are going to the school, you can spread chickenpox to everyone. You are having corona, you are going to the school, you can spread them. Okay, those who are having weak immune system will be getting it very easily. You are having a common cold, you can spread from one person to another. So these are all we call it as what? We call them as infectious diseases. Okay, then what is non-infectious diseases? How can a disease be non-infectious? Non-infectious diseases are usually not caused by a pathogen. So, okay, mostly pathogen is not the cause. These infectious diseases, when you are seeing the main cause is the pathogen. So, now you need to know what is a pathogen. Pathogen is the disease causing germs. The disease causing germs, germs, we call it as what? We call them as pathogens. Another term 
which we can use is antigen. Antigens are also the germs which are entering into our body and causing some diseases. Okay. So here pathogen is the common uh, term which we use for the uh, protozoa or the virus or the bacteria or the fungi, whomsoever may be the microorganism usually, they are entering into our body and causing the disease. And this pathogen can spread from one person to another, either through food or through water or through vector or just through A, it can spread from one person to another. So then we call this uh, diseases as what? Infectious diseases. So infectious diseases are usually caused by whom? Pathogens. What are pathogens? They are the disease causing germs. Okay. So examples of pathogens, it can be bacteria, it can be fungi, it can be your protozoa, it can be worms. Okay. Yeah. Now non-infectious. Commonly non-infectious diseases are not caused by a pathogen. And this non-infectious diseases are occurring because of malfunctioning of your body organs. Means your kidney is not functioning properly, you can get uremia. Your heart is not properly functioning, you atherosclerosis. Like that many heart related diseases, kidney related diseases, nervous disorders and all we have learned, isn't it? So these are all not spreading. It's usually not spreading. Your body, the organ is not functioning properly because of that you are having the disease. Your diabetes. Diabetes will not spread from one person to another. You are having cancer. The cancer will not spread from one person to another. Which means your body is not responding properly. Understood. So that case, these diseases we call it as what? We call it as non-infectious diseases. Is that clear? Now this non-infectious diseases, deficiency diseases can also come under this. What is deficiency diseases? Like if you are not taking vitamins or minerals properly, then you can get get attacked. Sorry, it gets uh, anemia. Okay, so like that you can find night blindness. So like that many diseases, berry berry, isn't it? Scurvy, all these things you would have learned. So these diseases are also caused because your food is not having proper vitamins, proper uh, minerals, or you can suffer from protein and regime malnutrition. The babies usually suffer from because they are not having a proper protein rich diet, carbohydrate rich diet is not present. In that case, they can suffer from those deficiency diseases. And these deficiency diseases are also coming on the wound, the non-infectious diseases. Hope so it's clear. So diseases can be classified into two types. So what are they? One is infectious and the second one is non-infectious. Okay. Infectious is spread from one person to another. Like communicable, contagious, contagious spreads. Non-infectious, it doesn't spread from one person to another. So infectious diseases are usually caused by Disease causing germs, we call them as what? We call them as pathogens. Is that clear? Next, uh, we are going to differentiate between these infectious and non-infectious diseases. First, you listen now. What is the first point? Uh, infectious disease, okay? They are easily transmitted from one infected person to another. As I already told you, that is not transmitted. Non-infectious is not transmitted. Second, such diseases are caused due to extrinsic factors. Infectious diseases are caused due to external factors. What is the external factor? The pathogens. From outside it is getting in either through food or through air or through the vector. It is getting into my body. Extrinsic. From outside it is getting into my body. Then I call them as what? I call them as infectious. Okay? Extrinsic factors. So they are the extrinsic factors. So infectious diseases are caused because of extrinsic factors. And non-infectious diseases, when you see, it can be extrinsic as well as it can be like cancer. I'm having pesticide uh, loaded, fertilizers loaded, put so on home, viruses, something is entering into my body. And uh, it is um, uh, turning my cells into um, uh, un non-stop dividing cells uh, and I'm getting cancer. So extrinsic. Something is intrinsic. Intrinsic means what? From within my body itself, my body is not, my organs are not functioning properly it is inside so this intrinsic factor like deficiency or like you're having hereditary diseases genes are defective okay that is intrinsic within your body it is already there from outside it need not be brought so both extrinsic and intrinsic factors are responsible for what non-infectious diseases but for infectious it is only extrinsic for non-infectious it can be intrinsic as well as it can be extrinsic factors okay extrinsic as i told you cancer Intrinsic, when you are saying deficiency diseases or hereditary disorders are all intrinsic factors. Intrinsic, within your body. Extrinsic, from outside. Okay. Right. 
uh, when infectious diseases, public health and personal hygiene, uh, sorry, personal hygiene reduces the probability of the disease. So if you are having, uh, maintaining your proper health, personal health, public uh, sanitation, uh, waste disposal, everything is taken care. So this infectious diseases to some extent can be controlled. Non-infectious diseases, public health and personal, personal uh, hygiene, that and all is not that important because if at all you are having maintaining personal hygiene, public health conditions are proper, then also there are chances of getting non-infectious diseases. But infectious diseases to some extent you can control. Okay. So then examples has been given like H, uh, HIV, tetanus, chicken pox, infectious, non-infectious examples, cancer. You are having uh, kidney related disorders or can be put under this anemia, uh, the rectal rickets, scurvy, all this comes under non-infectious diseases. Hope so till this it's clear. So till now what we have discussed, we discussed about what is health, then we discussed about what is disease, then we discussed about what are the two types of diseases and we differentiate between the two types of diseases, infectious and non-infectious, isn't it? The next what we are going to discuss is, uh, is that common infectious diseases, what are the causative agents, the pathogens, what sort of pathogens are causing what sort of diseases. So that's what we are going to discuss. And here you have to remember that when you are learning this infectious diseases, name of the disease, the causative organism, who is causing it? And whether it is a bacteria or a virus under which group of microorganism it is falling? What are its symptoms? Whether there is a test for that? And uh, how can it be prevented? So these all things you have to learn for each and every diseases, whichever is discussed in your book so that it will be easy for you to remember okay so like in that point only you learn disease causative organism under which group it is coming what are the symptoms whether there is any test for the same what are the remedial measures what are the preventive measures that can be saved what is the treatment for the same okay so these are the things what you can uh, do uh, for learning these infectious diseases is that clear so next we are moving on to this infectious diseases just we are categorizing them some of the infectious diseases under different heads under different pathogens, what are the different uh, deficiency diseases? Is that clear? Okay. Yeah, infectious diseases. Okay, so infectious diseases types. Okay, this one I will share you more. Just listen. I will just uh, write down the names of the diseases. Uh, means names of the pathogen. One is your bacteria. Second is your virus. Viral diseases, third is your protozoa, fourth is your fungal, and fifth is your hemolytic. So, one by one, we are going to discuss infectious diseases under these pathogens we are going to categorize bacteria, virus, protozoa, fungal, hemolytic. What is helminthic? It is worms. Worms causing diseases. Okay. So bacteria, number one. So infectious diseases, how many types are there? Bacteria, fungi, viral, protozoa and helminthic. Okay. Now the first thing is your bacteria. Examples you should know. Bacteria, what all diseases are caused by bacteria. Some examples are given here. Typhoid, pneumonia, diphtheria, bacterial dysentery, plague. These are all diseases which are caused by this bacteria. Under virus, when you are seeing, you are having many like your polio virus, common cold, dengue, chicken punia. These are all coming under what? These are coming under viral diseases. Many are there, but we are going to confine only to the topics what has been discussed in your textbook. Okay. Then protozoa, when it is coming, it is your malaria, amoebiasis are coming under what? It is coming under protozoa. Okay. Fungal, you are having what? Fungals like you are having ringworm, the disease which is caused. Usually the allergies are caused by what? The fungus. Okay, fungal are allergy in the boots, the dresses or the shoes which you are wearing. You can find these can cause allergy. The fungus cause you. Uh, <laughs> isn't it? So that is uh, fungal diseases. More I am not going. Thereafter, helminthic diseases. Helminthic diseases are caused because of the worms. Okay. So like for example, we have learned roundworm, ascariasis. Elephantiasis, filariasis, uh, teniasis, okay. So these are all tape bombing is. So these are all caused by what? By worms. So then we categorize them as what? Helminthic. So 
Infectious types, diseases types when you are saying it can be caused by bacteria. So what are the diseases which are caused by bacteria? I have to write off 1, 2, 3, 4. Then what are the diseases which are caused by virus? This is discussed in here. And you should also read uh, some of the uh, books so that you can understand more about the different types of diseases caused by. But it is very huge. You cannot make it. Okay. So but you should have some idea. This disease is caused by virus. This is this is caused by bacteria. Like that you should have some idea. Okay. So virus, uh, there are fungi, protozoa and helminthic, what all diseases they are causing. So that is the next thing what you have to keep in your mind. Okay. So uh, this is enough for today. I think uh, it's, uh, I need not go much. So uh, today's topic, what and all we discussed, just we can recap. Okay. The first one is that what is health? I told you this is a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being and not merely free from disease. What is a disease? It is a condition which interferes with normal functioning of your body. The body mood organs are not functioning properly. You are having a disease. Then we discussed about the types of disease, infectious as well as non-infectious. Infectious are caused by extrinsic factors and non-infectious, it can be extrinsic or intrinsic. And infectious diseases are caused usually because of a pathogen, isn't it? And the, the infectious diseases types can, based on the pathogens, it can be bacterial, it can be viral, it can be fungal, it can be protozoal, or it can be helminthic diseases. Okay. Examples of its names has to be noted. Okay. With this, let me wind up for today. So have a nice day. Thank you.